Hello Art One students. The purpose of this particular demo is just to show you all how to get started with the very early stages of practicing putting your color wheel onto the subject that you have selected for your color wheel project. So I'm just erasing a couple of my extra pencil lines. Now keep in mind that I will still redraw before I start my final piece. I'm simply showing you all how to get started with the color wheel step so that you can figure out and practice your color placement. So once you have your image and you are ready to start adding some of that color, the first thing I would recommend doing is making any sort of markings where highlights might be because remember those highlights are going to be very important that they stay white. If I were you, I would draw them very lightly, but I would also make sure that they are in there and make sure you draw them just a little bit larger than what you're going to need them to end up being. So this is the highlight and then there's some highlights on the eyes. So then the first thing I'm going to do is just jump in with a color of my choice it does not necessarily matter which color because remember the key is making sure that your color wheel then goes either across or around or up and down in the correct order. So what I'm going to do is just start here in this eye with my green and I'm going to be looking at my reference image which I actually have in grayscale because again, what that's going to help me do is just really be able to focus on the different values that I'm seeing and not so much the actual color that the sea turtle himself is. So as you can see, I'm not going to start with my super darkest values right off the bat because I'm going to build those values up in layers. So I'm just going to get some of the shading in there to start out, knowing full well that I'm going to be adding a lot more shading and a lot more detail as I go. This is kind of like blocking in. You'll hear some artists talk about blocking in their colors, and all that means is that they're going to be putting a little bit of color first, or putting a generic color first, and then adding more detail and shading in subsequent layers. So right now I'm just getting some of my green down in certain areas where I know that there are going to be shadows. So notice that every time I'm shading, I'm basically creating a gradient. I'm basically creating a miniature value scale from dark to light anywhere where there is a transition in value. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that you guys can see that. Let me double check the angle here. Yeah, you guys can see that pretty decently. So then the next thing I'm going to do is go in with a little bit of my limeier green because I'm working my way towards yellow on this side. So again, the exact color placement is up to you, but it will have to be in the correct order in terms of the color wheel and the sequence of those colors. So then I'm just going to extend beyond that into the next area a little bit. Turn the page as often as you need to. So this area here is pretty dark and so is this area, but right now this area is gonna stay pretty light. So I'm just going to put a little bit here. And put some of this shadow in here. Oops. 
So right now we're again still just kind of blocking in those shadows, putting down where they're eventually going to turn more into shadows. And like I said, this area is pretty dark, but I also want to go ahead and start moving into my yellow. So it's not going to seem quite as dark because it is yellow, but the effect will still be there, I promise. <laughs> So again, it's very important that you look at your reference image for this. Constantly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And notice that I am not finishing with each color before I move to the next color. If I were to do that, then I would not end up with color transitions that would be as smooth as what I need and want them to be. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of my green on top of that to make it more of a yellow green. So you absolutely will be layering and overlapping, mixing colors if you're using paint, which I will show you in another demo. But remember, this is really just practicing that color placement and starting to mix them a little bit. Remember to make sure that your shading enhances the shape. So right now I'm making sure that I shade in a way that kind of curves so that it helps make that arm of the sea turtle look even more round rather than flattening it. So then I'm going to go back in with a little more green here. But I'm going to remember that this area is pretty light, so I don't want to put too much color there yet. Maybe go back in with some more of my other green. So it's definitely going to be back and forth between colors. That's the only way you can really blend them successfully. Maybe put a little bit of yellow here to show that highlight. Now I know that this is new for a lot of you, so I'm not expecting it to turn out, you know, on your first try, which is why we are practicing. That's why I'm recommending that you do exactly what I'm doing and figure out your color placement before you start on that final piece. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a tint of blue, or a little bit of blue in there, because what that's gonna do is push that eye socket a little deeper. Plus, I'm gonna be starting to go towards blue on this side. So right now, I'm just gonna grab my orange to continue into here, because I'm gonna go to orange and then to red. But remember, I'm going to have yellow-orange first. So I'm just going to pick up here. Very lightly right now. Because remember, I'm going to be building up that value in layers. Certainly, certainly not all at once. Again, I'm going to turn my page. So notice that right here I've got a spot where the orange, the yellow, and the green are all kind of overlapping. That's perfectly fine. So that's going to make a little bit more of a yellow-orange. Now I'll go back over that with the yellow to brighten up the yellowy in the yellow-orange. So I'm not pressing down very hard with my colored pencils on this point, simply because it is a lighter value. If you look at my reference image, which is on Google Classrooms, 
you'll see that the top of the fin here is lighter than the bottom of the fin. So I want to make sure that mine remains that way as well. So again, I'm just getting it to that white value again, because then the next thing I would do would be add some red orange, and then some orange again, and then some yellow, and then some red, as I eventually get up towards the red on that side. Still remembering to look at my reference image. I've got a little bit of a darker value up here. Notice that I'm not necessarily worrying too much about the pattern yet these little spots that are on the fins, I will eventually, but right now I'm treating it as if they are not there so that I can focus more on the shadows and the highlights of the overall form of that fin. So this particular image is going to get a horizontal color wheel effect. Remember, you get to pick exactly how you use the color wheel on yours. So in the next video that I'm going to be posting, I will just continue working on this example piece so that you guys can see sort of how the rest of the color wheel would be practiced and laid out. Remember, I will not finish it in the demo simply because that would take hours. And this is a sketch for practice. So once you feel comfortable with your sketch, I want you to realize that you can move on to your final piece. You don't have to necessarily completely finish your sketch as if it were a finished product. So in the next video, I'll show you going the other direction, going towards blue-green, and then blue, and then blue-violet, and then violet, and red-violet. And then there will eventually be a little bit of red on both sides, as if that color wheel is wrapping around the turtle.